I think the market's discounted this already mainly and that the low potentially is in because what will be happening in 12 months time? In 12 months time, we will have seen a recession and we will likely be coming out of it. Whether we're fully out of it or not, doesn't matter. A recession at some point in the future means that the Federal Reserve will stop hiking and will stop shrinking the balance sheet. And they will probably go towards cutting. In the future, in 12 months time, the probability of inflation being, you know, at 8% is extremely low because of the year-on-year -year computational differences and the fact that oil, copper, freight rates, I mean, everything has come down massively. So I'm thinking that there is a probability that inflation goes negative within 18 months. So if we look at 12 months, the recession is behind us, rates are lower, and inflation is low. Okay, so that is a very good outcome for risk assets. So I'm thinking the markets are forward-looking. I think the sentiment is extremely bearish, and we're going into a potential change in the macro. Does it happen this month, next month? Don't really care. What I do know is that a few things happen. The main driver of all of this is liquidity. Liquidity drives all financial markets. Liquidity for the definition here would be the kind of ease of which money flows around the system. And I can use money supply growth, M2 growth globally. And obviously with the central banks all jacking up rates and shrinking their balance sheets, what they're actually saying to you is we want to take liquidity out so you guys can't do as much speculation. Now, what that means is things like your credit card rate goes up, your mortgage rate goes up, you've got less money to spend on stuff. So liquidity, your liquidity has been taken out of your pocket. And it's the same for everybody, particularly because there's so much debt in the system. However, our job is not to live in the present. Our job is to live in the future. And we need to understand where the future lies. So Stan Druckermiller importantly said that the job in macro is to see 12 to 18 months out because the asset markets tend to price the future. So right now we can hear people all on Twitter saying, we're going into recession. It's clear there's going to be another leg down in equities because they need to price in the recession. That's assuming that everything operates in real time, but it doesn't. So when I look at the year on year rate of change of, let's say, the NASDAQ and compare it to the ISM index, which is my guide to the business cycle, the Institute of Supply Managers survey, it suggests that the ISM survey, the NASDAQ is pricing in ISM at around 40. ISM at 40 is relatively deep recession. ISM at 47 is usually a recession level and 40 is something to the order of magnitude of kind of negative 2% GDP growth. So it's already priced in. The S&P is similar. Things like copper are close, oil less so, but coming down over time in line with the business cycle. The exponential age stock, so the long end of technology, the ARC style investments, they priced an even deeper recession. So they got down to about 35 in the ISM, which was very, very low. The changes that happened were so staggering and this is happening faster. And at the very center of it is a system of money and value, which means that in itself, it is going to accrue value faster than anything else, because that's what it's actually doing, is taking value from old places and putting it into a new place. The macro is so fucked, which we've known for so long. You know, the massive debt, the bad demographics, the polarization of the world again, the deglobalization, the globalization, all the mess that that caused, all of that is going on in macro land, which is pretty miserable. So ISM going down, what does that say? It says that the probability of stimulus in the future is going up because the economy is slowing down. So basically about nine months ago, ISM peaks and starts going down. So that tells you that in nine months time, i.e. about now, we should start to see a turn of stimulus. Do we see any evidence of that? Well, in Europe, they're starting to do stimulus, but it's in this direct handout stimulus pattern that I've talked about in the past, which is, hey, listen, you guys are getting killed on your electricity bills, let us help you. It's still right. stimulus. You know, it's not central bank printing yet, but the stimulus coming into the system and it's happening in China, it's happening in Europe. The Japanese are doing something different. They are expanding the balance sheet by buying JGBs and devaluing their currency. It's called yield curve control. The US, many states have given out handouts to pay for electricity bills. So at the margin, things are changing. The bond market's still thrashing around trying to figure this out because the quantitative tightening is um, confusing the picture for bonds because bond liquidity is ultra low, as bad as it was. Well, not yet as bad, but it's the second worst it's been since the global financial crisis. So there's an issue going on there. But generally speaking, if I look at things like 
forward break-even rates. They're telling us inflation is kind of in freefall right now. Those are all of the things that will tell us this. But ISM nine months forward, as long as ISM is falling fast, the probability goes up. I looked back and found that every single time the ISM crossed 50 to the downside, the Fed stopped or cut. Stopped hiking or cut. They only stopped hiking once, which was 2016. Every single other time they cut soon after. Now, because of this inflation narrative that's left, I don't think they cut immediately, but I think they stop pretty fast. As soon as they see the economy imploding, unemployment ticks up. So they're all the same kind of indicators. M2 is just another way of expressing it, which is economic growth bad needs to get stimulated. You can't let anything go wrong. So need to bring down inflation expectations, need to raise rates. Holy shit, the Italians can't pay their bond coupons. Okay, we won't allow those spreads to widen. Okay, that means our currency is probably going to go down. Okay, we can deal with that. That's fine. But oh my God, we can't let households suffer the pain here. So we need to give them money. But that's stimulative. So we need to be careful not to bring inflation back. So we're going to raise rates, right? It's this excessive control over the economy, almost like a command economy like China. And the reason being is there's too much debt. And so we can't let the whole thing blow up, right? It's the fear of the big blow up. Now, I think the ECB knows how to stop the big blow up, which is debase your currency. That's the way, the central bank balance sheet. But they don't want to go there yet because they can't. So you have to play this game. But basically, it's this desperate game to keep all the balls in the air and not let them all fall to the floor. If you were given the job, if you were Christine Lagarde, what are you going to do? Let it all burn? No. So you kind of don't get the choice. You're stuck. You know, you're stuck trying to plug the leaky boat with your fingers. So you've got your toe there, your finger there, but there's another leak. I say, oh, shit, I'll do that. And I'll go to back, you know. That's the game they're all playing. All of them. The Fed, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, PBOC, the whole damn lot. It's not the end of the world. Europeans can export more. Maybe it makes the Italians and the Spanish more competitive on a global landscape. Who knows? It doesn't have to be apocalyptical. And if you can do it in a slow enough way, I mean, well, the yen was 48% in a year and a half, which is pretty staggering for the third largest currency traded pair on earth to have moved that fast. And nothing really broke. Mm. So look, it's okay. It doesn't mean the end of the world. I mean, I've never seen Twitter so apocalyptical about everything. You know, it's like Europe's going into the Stone Age this winter. There's going to be bodies in the streets. Everyone's going to be rioting. You know, there's a nuclear war going to go on. I mean, everybody calm down. Those outcomes, there is a probability, but it's not the highest probability. Europe, there's a lot of smart enough people. They might have made some policy mistakes, but they'll figure it out. People, particularly on the US side of the pond, looking at the European side of the pond are much more apocalyptical. So the market is currently obsessed by inflation. It's obsessed by the central bank. And I think the reality is that what we've actually done is utterly destroyed demand already. We've had the largest rate of change of interest rates in history, the largest rate of change of commodities in history. Those things tend to be financial conditions tightening. We can see it in the equity market. We can see it in the housing market. You can see it in the crypto market. These conditions have tightened dramatically. That's why I'm really paying attention right now. I think the market's probably wrong. And I think that it's going to set up for a whole bunch of opportunities as the Fed pivot fast and the economy goes into recession much quicker than anybody expects. People are waiting for what is the shoe to drop for this cycle. I think the shoe is the economy like 1974 and it's not a financial event, more an economic event and probably the US consumer event. Now in 2008 the Fed discovered the new trick which was the balance sheet. Now if you understand the balance sheet as you expand it automatically makes the S&P and other risk assets reprice higher because the denominator's fallen. That stops the rot because the collateral in the system goes up in price and everything kind of resets. And every time the Fed have used the balance sheet since, it's had exactly the same impact, which is an immediate turn in asset prices. An immediate turn once it was used in 2009, it had immediate turn when it was used in the pandemic, and it had immediate turn when the market started to sniff it out in 2018. I don't see any reason reason why the Fed won't do it again. So I'm anticipating a short, very sharp recession and a return to use of the Fed balance sheet, direct transfer payments to give money directly to poorer people and the Fed having to support some parts of the markets again. But let's see how it plays out. The main point being is we've got the worst ahead of us. It's going to be faster than people expect. It's going to be more severe than people expect. And then we can look out looking forwards. So that's my pretty horrific story from here.